My name is Jeremy, and I serve as one of the pastors of Lavington Vineyard Church. Well, let me take this time to, to give an update on the COVID situation. And so I want to take some time on behalf of the elders to share a bit of that update. And so I think it's worth taking a bit of time within the sermon. I think it fits well in the context, but I hope it's helpful for you. So look, church, a good number have been asking, why aren't we meeting when kids have gone back to school, many adults have returned to their offices? So a good number have been asking about that, and I bet most have at least been wondering about that. And look, I, I get that. I get that. But at the same time, it doesn't mean an automatic decision for us to return to McKinney School to be doing in-person services. Our desire is to target Easter for regathering, but that is not 100%. And we think it is best to, to have that subject to the information that we have on the ground over the next, what, four to six weeks. And as a team, as an elder team, we're going to be making this decision with a lot of counsel and advice from others. Make a decision as the 4th of April approaches. So look, we would love to come together on that Easter Sunday to celebrate after a year. We were one of the first churches in Nairobi to stop services. By the way, we never shut down. We've always been open. We were one of the first to stop Sunday services and we're one of the last um, to go back. But listen to, to what our internal experts are conveying. Because just a couple days ago, I had a very sobering and insightful conversation with some trusted, respected experts in our, con in our congregation. So one is that we cannot make decisions based on, quote-unquote, official testing and hospitalization numbers, as they are simply too low to be a reliable, reliable barometer. So most people cannot afford a test. And when it comes to the hospital, most people cannot afford an ICU bed if they are gravely ill. Our perspective would be that if it were not for the UK and the South Africa variants that are wreaking havoc on the world, they are posing huge risks. And our perspective would be different if those were not around. But we need to be patient, church. We feel like we need to be patient as scientists and medical experts get a clearer picture. And church, indeed, our worst days may be ahead. Significant vaccinations are quite a ways off for Kenya. Healthcare sources have been saying in the past three weeks to brace for a second wave. And like I said, ICU beds are not filling because most people cannot afford them. And let me just challenge us individually because I, like you perhaps, I've gone out, I've, I've met with people one-on-one -on -one in a safe way. My kids have, have gone out and hung out with friends trying to be as safe as possible. We want life to return to normal. We know we can't be 100% safe. And when we, but when we go out, we feel like, I mean, is it really that bad? But can I challenge us to think that our individual perspective of what we see and experience in daily life is not the full scope and danger of COVID-19 in Kenya. And yes, we're in the extreme minority of churches that have yet to meet physically, but we feel it is best to take a cautious approach. And it's true, we can't be 100% safe and Individuals are understandably desiring worship in person, and people will make individual decisions based on their conscience before God. But as a leadership, our collective conscience as a team has meant a conservative approach. That's just where we stand. So although the government and most parents find it necessary for the kids to do in-person learning, and many adults have found it safe to return to the office, although frankly, a lot of them are probably forced to go back. We believe the evidence shows that churches and their Sunday activities greatly increase the risk of transmission. To mitigate the effects of, of pandemic fatigue and the loss and the sadness of not being together, we want to start doing something more this year. And frankly, I, I wish we had started doing it in September and October. And, and I, I, the buck stops with me. So we, we plan to start having small live audiences for sermons, 
for live preachers to be able to preach to a live audience because preaching just to the camera, even though I love Robert here, our camera guy, we miss preaching to a live audience. So we also think that'll be a way for people to get together and see each other and we'll do it safely. Also, we want to gather those in a safe way who are just not able to connect as much virtually for whatever reason. And so we want to be able to gather those folks even once a month for some times of fellowship. And so look, if Easter service does happen, kindly know that it would be low numbers. It would still be recorded, especially for those who who can't come or you don't feel comfortable coming yet. Uh, We would have it recorded so people can watch it later. And we would also have really strict rules for attendance. So we can we continue to consider the possibility of a smaller gathering for Easter, but we're going to continue to assess the situation and make a final decision probably by mid March, because if we go forward with it, we would have a very strict registration process so that we could do contact tracing if necessary. So please, church, once again, if you are feeling disconnected at all please do reach out. Reach out to the church office, office at lavingtonvineyard.org or connect at lavingtonvineyard.org. We want to know how we can come alongside you and assist you and be with you during this time.